Browns fans, I'm Dan Marotti. And I'm Mr. USA WWE Hall of Famer Tony Atlas. Getting comfortable, baby. Getting comfortable. Tony Atlas, it is February the 6th. Before we kick off a brand new MWF Ultra, you know what today is, don't you? Friday. The Thursday, but close. It's Waitangi Day. Waitangi? Waitangi Day. Who you? Tongue what? It's the holiday in New Zealand, Waitangi Day. <laughs> <laughs> That's the name of it. <laughs> what, <coughs> what? What? What is it? What, is your tongue? No, it's similar to July Fourth down in New Zealand. And home, what? Did, what did that mean? They celebrate. I celebrate what? Why Tonguey Day? Why have a tongue? Well, you'd have to ask Lanny Poffo about that. Oh, there you go again. Oh. A brand new MWF tour is next. <laughs> I don't. <laughs> This is Mick Foley. This is Harley Race. This is Shelton Benjamin. This is Mr. Wonderful Paul Lorndorf. This is the Monster Abyss. And this is Daniel Bryan. This is JBL, and you're watching the MWF. Be there live. David Reese, that's why I've been contacting you. I've been tweeting you. I've been emailing you. I've been shooting you messages all week, all month. I'm asking for any match. MWF's call to action. I've heard about it. And I mean, why wouldn't you want Vinny Wasco on the show? All the way from Los Angeles, California, right here to Boston, Mass. I don't care who the opponent is. I don't care if it's the biggest, the baddest, the best. I want anyone and everyone. <laughs> Let me tell you something, David. Just like Paul Revere warned Boston that the British are coming, I'm warning in Boston that Vinny Wasco is coming. Whoever my opponent is, I guarantee you, on that night, you're gonna get your daily dose of vitamin V. All right, Tony, our friends down under are celebrating the big day, Waitangi Day. I know maybe if you ever make it to New Zealand, you, Tony Gurria, the Bushwhackers, you'll have a grand old time. Oh, I love holidays. I, I never you heard seem of that thrilled one as you yawn at Waitangi Day. Yeah, I, I, I never heard of that one before. That you, you got me on that one. I can't even speak on it. I don't even know what to talk about. I don't know what it is. All right. It's like the Independence Day of New Zealand. Right. I take your word for it. All right. Well, I tell you this. I don't know what is happening in the control room. There's a big ruckus, Tony. I'm telling you this. February is here now. We're getting a little bit closer to the end of winter, just inching along week by week. But I tell you, Tony, three big weeks of excitement for us. We have MWF Project X Loose Cannon Saturday night, March the 28th. It wants Somerville and Somerville, Massachusetts, our return to the great city of Somerville for the first time since Good Time Emporium shut its doors back in 2008. I'm really looking forward to that. The following weekend, we have WrestleCon down at the home of the New York Yankees for spring training. George Steinbrenner Field in Tampa, Florida. Apparently, it's right across the street from the home of WrestleMania 36. And then all roads head north again to downtown Melrose, Massachusetts, 02176. The zip code of champions at Memorial Hall. It's going to be MWF Project X. Back to the 80s WrestleFest, Saturday night, April the 11th, with Jake Roberts, Tony Atlas, Paul Wondorf, Lanny Poffo, and many more to be added. It is going to be a happening. Those discount VIP packages are available online at bostonwrestling.com. Tony, it's going to be a huge spring for us. It may still be cold out here in Boston right now. It's only February, but we're getting closer. Well, you know, it may be cold on our side, but it's going to be one hot, hot, hot group of entertainment going on on the inside because we got some of the hottest wrestlers in the country today. You got some of the greatest stars in the country today. So no matter how cold it is on the outside, you're going to be sweating the excitement on the inside because what you got planned for this area is going to be absolutely fantastic. I just can't wait to see it. We're going to have a great few weeks from March into April. The good times are going to roll. Yes, it is. From Boston to Tampa and back, baby. That, that's right. You know, you know that there's so much great talent out here today that it's very hard to go in and, and to, to go to any of your shows there and, and not see great talent. I know the last show you had in Melrose was absolutely fantastic. And all the fans came up. I got emails and everything else from people that tell me, say, when you're coming back, we can't wait to come back. It was great meeting Mark Henry, great meeting Vicar Guerrero. It was great meeting... Uh, 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 what uh, uh, 
I keep forgetting the kid name. There. Evan Boyd. Evan Boyd, yeah. Jerry I'll, Briscoe, Jerry TJP, Briscoe, they were and, all and, there. Tony. And not only that, Jerry Briscoe helped a lot of the young entertainment company because he had a, 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 a seminar earlier. He sure did. And, he, and, they, and they performed in front of him, and he gave them advice. I sat there right behind him with him, and Vicar gave them advice, and they were very... The, you know, thankful. And they, some of the kids were taping what he was saying so they don't forget what he said. But he's the type of person that, uh, like, like you younger kids, y'all want to learn something about the way wrestling should be, how to get into the WWE, or to uh, elevate yourself in the world of professional wrestling. Jerry Briscoe and Vic Guerrero and, and these guys were there giving advice. It's not only during the seminar, but they was giving advice back in the dressing room too. So, so they was hands on for the beginning of the show to the end of the show. Jerry Briscoe was out with each and every fan, shaking hands, taking pictures. Yeah, he was just ecstatic to be there, to be a part of this great organization, to get great. But it was really, really a great time, and it only could get better. I've, I'm very proud to call Jerry Briscoe not just uh, a legend in this business, a Hall of Famer, someone that is still with WWE in the role of a talent scout, but to call the man a friend. I have so yes. much respect for Jerry Briscoe. And Wonderful I'm so, individual. So Wonderful. glad he's involved with what we're doing here in the Millennium Wrestling Federation yeah. in 2020 and hopefully beyond. Yeah, yeah. Like I say, he's a wonderful individual. But to be such a tough person in his uh, younger days, I mean, we got to win with Jerry Briscoe. I mean, he, he, you have to fight for your life. Him and his brother... Uh, uh, was great amateur wrestlers. You know, they wouldn't call it nowadays shooters. Yeah. You know, they, they was known for if, to getting their way in the ring. If, if you got smart with them in the ring, brother, you have a price to pay because they was, uh, Jerry was one tough, tough individual. And for what I see, he ain't changed much. He told me, or he, I should say he tells me that every time when him and I chat, to tell you that he has bigger calves than you. Yes, he does. He got some of the biggest set of calves that he had bigger calves than anybody in the dressing room. He was just a phenomenal athlete his whole life. He's just been a great athlete, a, 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 a gentleman, and a, a very, like you, a good friend of mine. Oh, thank you. I appreciate yeah, that. Very good friend. Well, we're glad to have you here. We're glad to have Jerry with us, hopefully, again here in 2020. A lot of respect for the man. We have some good times. Great sense of humor, great stories from his great career dating back to the late 1960s. Yeah. Yeah, you know, he uh, came up rough, uh, him and his uh, family. He, was, he wasn't born rich, you know. Everything that uh, he ever uh, got in his life, he earned on his own mm -hmm. through hard work and, 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 and conviction. And uh, he, he tried to pad this on to the younger generation. You know, don't give up on yourself so easy. You know, work hard, keep, you know, uh, keep your dreams alive, and, and eventually, whatever you want. We live in a country, fortunate for us that if you work hard and keep your nose clean, you get what you want in this country. I mean, Jerry Briscoe is a shiny example of that. All right, Tony, last week in action, we saw the debut of two new athletes here in the MWF, Alec Price defeating Channing Thomas. Uh, they trained not too far from here, both uh, from the Bell Time Club uh, Academy of Professional Wrestling. What do you see from these two in the future? I, I think Alec Price certainly is, is shooting to the stars like a rocket. Channing Thomas, I could see him. Uh, once he finds maybe the proper footing in the king of sports, I could see him going on a very similar path. I'm not quite sure what to make of him, his overall presentation, but I was impressed with the athletic ability. Yeah, you know, a lot of wrestlers have faced that uh, uh, in the past. I remember when Huck Hogan first came to uh, WWWF during the time, they didn't know what to do with him. I mean, they, they had no idea of what to put, put, uh, to put with this big, huge man, because they had big guys like Big John Studs, Andre the Giant. So uh, he was just another big guy for, for, for many, many years. But eventually, due to the geniusness of Vince McMahon uh, Jr., he was able to find a, not only a spot for Huck Hogan, but make him into one of the greatest wrestlers the world I've seen. Stone Stone Cold Steve Austin was down in WCW for many, many, many years. And, and, and they didn't know what to do with him. Bill Watts didn't know what to do with him. Dustin Rowe didn't know what to do with him. All the organization, they didn't know he was stunning Steve Austin. Vince McMahon, through his genius, made him into what we know as, as Cold Stone Steve Austin. And there's a whole list of guys that went through the same, uh, the same thing. So I, I look at, 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 at Hogan and Stone Cold Steve Austin, if we mentioned the two guys you just talked about, I, I, I see the same picture. You really don't know how far they're going to go, but you, you see the potential there. You see how... Well, we got a little Undertaker how, action going on right now, Tony. You see the potential there. You see the ability there. You see the desire. You see the hunger there. 
So if they keep doing what they're doing, then who knows? We may be looking at the next Huck Hogan and the next Stone Cold Steve Austin because both well, of them guys start off not being noticed. I remember Cactus Jack telling Bill Watt, said, don't let Cold Stone, don't let Steve Austin, he was Steve Austin then, set on the ship. So he got a lot of talent. Why they don't use him more, I don't know. That's what Cactus Jack said about Stone, uh, uh, Steve Austin at the time. Mm -hmm. Later on, I guess Vince McMahon saw this in him, and there you have it. And there you have it. Again, yep. I think Paul Bear is ribbing us. I don't know why the lights are going off and on. I don't know if they're trying to send us some kind of signal from the back, Tony. We'll keep going until we get that cue. But I ask you this. You saw the interview with myself and Brian Pillman, Tony. What a, what a conceited, cocky individual. I know he's part of the uprising faction. He's got Vicky Guerrero in his ear. He's got Cam Zagami in his ear. He's trying to claim that Vicky Guerrero all of a sudden is his biological mother. I think he's out of his mind, Tony, but... He's found success in the squared circle. I don't know what to make of it. What wrestler in today's period is not cocky? Fair enough. Maybe in extra my, cocky. In, in my day, being cocky, being arrogant, was considered a bad guy. Mm -hmm. Now, being a nice guy is bad. Being a, a bad guy is good. Well, we're going to head up to the ring tonight. What a matchup. I don't know who the underdog is going to be in this one. The mass hole Mike McCarthy, a man that's obviously left throughout Massachusetts, takes on yet another member of the uprising, six foot three, 420 pounds of Ring of Honor superstar Brian Malonis. We'll be back with great action after this time up. You're about to have so much fun! The Fiend Bray Wyatt will be in Fresno for the first time ever on the roads of WrestleMania. Are you willing to let him in? As he battles Daniel Bryan in the mix for the Universal Championship in a triple threat match. You don't mess with a man's family. No more mind games. Any time, any place, any brain. Plus, 619! See Rey Mysterio. It's the WWE Road to WrestleMania Super Show this Sunday, February 9th. Tickets are available now. All right, wrestling fans, welcome back to MWF Ultra. What a matchup we have here. The Mansell Mike McCarthy takes on execution of Brian Milonis of Gam Zagami's Uprising Faction, the Uprising Faction funded by the Fox Network. And here Zagami goes again. Wow, what a low blow verbally from Zagami. As Malonis goes to work, this is the advantage of having someone like Zagami as a manager or a, a representative maybe in this case. Malonis hurls McCarthy across the ring, two longtime MWF veterans. Both individuals made their debut with us in 2003. Mike McCarthy defeated Eddie Edwards at the first Soul Survivor. Brian Malonis was part of Ox Baker's arm. Look at this outside the ring early on. McCarthy trying to battle back. He is the personification of the heart and soul that is Boston itself. A true mass soul, but look at that. Malonis just raking away on the face. Malonis, former MWF tag team champion. Look at that, McCarthy uses all the strength in his body to try and gain the upper hand on a six foot three, 440 pound man. And Malonis felt that one, almost chopped the skin off his chest. Rolls Malonis back into the ring. Malonis held MWF tag team gold with big Rick Fuller when they were part of Paul Bearer's trifecta of terror and Sigari to the back of the head. Shades of bad news, Alan Coach, bad news Brown. Malonis is rocking. Are we going to see a 617? He goes off the rope, but Sagami. Referee Eric Stefanowitz missed it. Look at that. Running cross body from Malonis. That could break a rib. Well, Malonis is a veteran right now, competes in Ring of Honor. And we're very happy to have him here in the Millennium Wrestling Federation. Just like to see him use a little bit more character and integrity 
as opposed to hooking up with a loser like Gamzagami. Returns the favor on that chop, sets up McCarthy off the ropes. Big time clothesline from Brian Malonis. After Paul Barry passed the trifecta of terror disbanded, Malonis wound up in the John Cena Sr. led uprising. And with John Cena Sr. suspended at one point under the auspices of Cam Zagami, look at that, he's gonna break his hand. That's four, well, one foot, that's 220 pounds on the man's hand. Zagami smiling about that one. Look at that. Telling McCarthy to go and buy a t-shirt from him. Disrespect. Zagami saying earlier the only way he could get into Madison Square Garden is to buy a ticket. Malone is ready to go to town. No. Blocked by McCarthy. Twice. Make it three. Four. Five. This is what he's going to have to do to wear down Brian Malone. Look at that knee to the midsection. Cuts him off. see right here oh wait a minute oh we talked earlier about breaking a rib that could have broke several ribs that's a 440 pound man crashing down onto the chest of the mass hole Mike McCarthy if you can't breathe you're not going to be able to compete in the squared circle and Zagami's got to be loving it what are we going to see now he almost looks like oh wait a minute this is fat ass he says well he just gave Mike McCarthy a few minutes to try and compose himself. Two? No, McCarthy kicks out just before three. Not even a kick out. He gets that left shoulder up. But look at the disrespect from Malonis. It doesn't look good for Mike McCarthy right now, despite the overwhelming fan support that the man has. Not only here in Massachusetts, throughout New England. Look at that, Malonis just shoves him down to the mat again. Complete and out of disrespect. McCarthy chopping that big chest. That's a lot of chest to chop. Malonis picks him up. McCarthy goes over, almost lands on his feet. Throws him into the ropes. Oh, look at that forearm to the, the upper back, maybe lower neck. There he goes again, McCarthy loves this. I thought we were going to see a 6-1-7 right hand to the face. Maybe even a thumb to the eye. Malonis doesn't look like he can see right now. Boot to the face. Oh, wait a minute. Malonis takes him and hurls him in to the turnbuckle. That's what a 200-pound weight advantage is going to do. But being lighter, it leads to McCarthy coming back. DDT off the middle ropes. Could this be enough to put away Malonis? No. No. And he reverses it into a cross face. Sagami up on the ropes. Malonis taps. Oh, this should be it. Come on. We've seen some officiating that leaves a lot to be desired here on Ultra so far in 2020. Stefano, it's the best of the group. And now McCarthy's had enough. He's looking to get his hands on Sagami. Well. Sagami runs in the ring, hides behind Malonis. Oh, wait a minute, Malonis catches him right there. Down he goes. This could be it. He's already worn down three. Big win for execution of Brian Malonis here on MWF Ultra to kick off a big month of February. He's ready to compete live when we return to Somerville for the first time in 12 years. As the uprising and Brian Pillman Jr. present MWF Project X Loose Cannons. Then two weeks later, we're back right here at Memorial Hall. MWF Project X back to the 80s. WrestleFest. Some of the great legends of the WWF 80s boom are going to be right here with us live. Jake the Snake Roberts, Demolition, Mr. Wonderful Paul Orndorff, but his DL Hurst. Certainly not an 80s superstar. An athlete looking to make an impact in 2020. Look at that face first into the canvas. McCarthy was just crushed by Malonis. Thanks to the aid of this low-life Zagami. 
And look at him slap the face. I'd like to see McCarthy get Zagami in an alley and just beat the ever-living you-know-what out of him. Look at the disrespect. Malonis looks like Cosro Vizieri, the iron cheek with the camel clutch. And McCarthy can't fight back. It's a three-on-one. Ring the bell and get some officials out here to end this. D.L. Hurst, we've seen him with the uprising. We saw him with Vicky Guerrero and the rest of the faction. We've yet to see him compete. But he's ready to see action on March the 28th and April 11th as well. For ticket information, fans, head on over to BostonWrestling.com. As Brian Malone is victorious in his 2020 debut, every member of the uprising has won. Brian Pillman defeated Lance in Hawaii, and Christian Casanova defeated Trey Lamar to kick off the new year, the new decade, the new chapter of the Millennium Wrestling Federation. The uprising continues to win, and in the end, that's what it's all about. You get the bigger paycheck when you win. That's what Sagami's all about, the money. He outsmarted John Cena Sr. He's invested his money in great talent. He's invested his money in Vicky Guerrero. And look at Mike McCarthy, that's not a happy man. He's gonna be looking for the uprising if I know Mike McCarthy, a great man. Again, fans, don't forget, get your tickets now. Project X, Saturday night, March the 28th. Then all roads lead back to Memorial Hall on April the 11th for Back to the 80s WrestleFest tickets at bostonwrestling.com. See you next week. Ontario, experience the hottest show on Monday nights with WWE Raw. Feel the thrill with nonstop action. Watch me as I burn it down. Larger than life superstars. See the queen in all of her splendor. Woo! And the unparalleled excitement of seeing it live. Get ready, because the man is coming around. Don't miss Monday Night Raw in Ontario on February 10th. Tickets and ringsider packages are available.